Welcome back. Today we will cover part two of the three-part series on using the Montreal Cognitive Assessment. As part of the diagnostic evaluation for dementia, the MOCA allows you to evaluate a number of key cognitive domains. Let's now look in depth at several domains. Today we will cover the domains including naming, memory, and attention. For the naming task, begin on the left, point to each figure and say, tell me the name of this animal. Acceptable answers include, for the first, lion, for the second, rhinoceros or rhino, for the third, camel or dromedary is acceptable. I'll take the pen from here on out. What is the name of that animal? A lion. And this one? A rhino. And this one? Camel. Okay, very good. Now we are going to begin the section where we test your patient's memory. This really happens in a two-part process. The first part you're going to do now, and that's called registration. That boils down to a patient repeating five words that they've heard you say. This allows you to know for sure that they've heard you, and without any question, they will know that you want them to remember the words that you've just said. Part two will happen later in the testing, and that's when you will ask the patient to recall the words that you've just asked them to remember. Watch now as I take a patient through part one of the memory assessment. Next, I'm going to say a list of five words. Okay. After I say the words, I want you to repeat okay. them back to me, okay. okay? Face, velvet, church, daisy, red. Your turn. Face, velvet, daisy, church, and red. Good. The order doesn't matter, so that was just okay. fine. I'll say them again, and yeah. you repeat them all back to me. Okay. Face, velvet, church, daisy, red. Face, velvet, church, daisy, red. Excellent. I want you to remember those words because I'm going to ask you those words later. Okay. Okay? Here are some pointers to keep in mind. It may take more than two tries for some patients to get all five words back to you. Some may not get all five words back to you. Keep track of that information, but remember there are no points associated with this part of the assessment. You do want to avoid letting patients repeat each word as you say them one at a time. So you say face, they say face. You say velvet, they say velvet. You don't want that. You really want to know from a list of five words that you say, can your patient repeat back the entire list? A final pearl. Make a note after you tell the patient you will be asking them to repeat the words later. Of course, it's not meant as a trick, but patients who cannot remember the words often will say, you didn't tell me I had to remember the words. While you never want to engage or argue about it, you can feel more confident about the test results if you keep track. And if they persist, saying, you didn't tell me to remember the words, I usually accept the blame, apologize, and move on, saying, next time, I will be more careful. Next are four tests dedicated to attention. Watch now as I take the patient through the forward digit span, the backward digit span, and the vigilance test. Next, I want you to repeat a list of numbers that I say. Okay. 21854. 21854. Good. Now I want you to repeat a list of numbers backwards of what I say. Okay. 742. 247. Good, good. Next, I want you to take your right hand and just kind of place it on your knee. I'm going to say a list of letters. Whenever you hear me say the letter A, I just want you to tap your hand on your knee. On knee. Okay. Yeah, one real good tap. Okay? Yep. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. F, B, A, C, M, N, A, A, J, K, L, B, A, F, A, K, D, E, A, 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 J, A, M, O, F, a, A, B. Excellent. Now we move on to one of the harder items on the assessment, 
the serial sevens. Many patients will try to say they cannot possibly do this, but with calm encouragement, you can get most patients to try. Now I'd like you to do some counting for me backwards. Oh, please. <laughs> Starting at 100, I'd like you to count backwards by seven. By seven? Oh, okay. So it would be 93 and 86 and 86. You said by seven. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would be six would be seventy nine. Uh, seventy two. Sixty. Uh, yeah, something just went blank. 62 minus 8, uh, 54. All right. Very good. We can move on from there. <laughs> I screw that up? No, you did well. Okay. Scoring the serial sevens is pretty straightforward. The item is scored out of three points. Full credit is given for four or five correct subtractions two points for two to three correct subtractions, and one point if they are only able to give you one correct subtraction. Here are some additional thoughts on this difficult item. First of all, this is not a memory test, so you can repeat the instructions. You do want each subtraction to be evaluated independently, and you can give a point for each correct subtraction even if they're out of sequence. For example, if a participant responds with their first subtraction being 92, but then they subsequently go on subtracting 7 each time, and they do that 4 times in a row, they would be given a score of 3. For our patient, she started out doing well, but then lost her attention and focus and started subtracting 8. But she did get four of the five correct subtractions and was able to get full credit of three points. Uh -huh.